Yo, what is up, folks? Jay the Great here, and then once again, I have my good friend Shinobi here today as well. So, guys, it's your boy Shinobi here. Yes, sir. And many of you who've been watching my content for quite some time know I made a video on this matter quite a while ago, but it wasn't in depth enough, I feel like, and my ideas have certainly evolved since then. So, this is time for a redo. The Tachi versus Pain debate has been one that has been rampant for several years now. And rightfully so, Itachi and Pain are both shinobi that are in that very rare air that few shinobi ever truly reach. Itachi is this prodigy far beyond the ordinary type figure that is respected throughout the ninja world, while Pain is quite literally a godlike figure that most can never even hope to challenge. Both are generational talents that are truly one in a million, making them two of the strongest shinobi on the face of the planet during their time. There are many parallels between the two powerhouses, if you will, when analyzing the canonical literature of their history, from the data books to the absurd feats both men accomplished in their highly respected shinobi careers, which we will be looking over in depth in this one. So today, as you guys have all probably guessed, we'll be discussing who would win and why between these two. So now to get right into it, comparing the caliber of opponents each faced prior to the war arc is a good way to establish where each stands in this sort of shinobi power hierarchy, if you will. Both defeated Sani, with Itachi defeating Orochimaru so badly to the point Orochimaru feared him and never dared challenge him again and pain killing Jiraiya in the rain village even with Jiraiya using sage mode with the help of Ma and Pa. Now some would say that Itachi was more impressive because he wasn't even looking at Orochimaru and still defeated him while three out of the six paths of pain were destroyed by Jiraiya along with Ma and Pa. However, I would say this is a false equivalency because for one, the specific scenario of each altercation is different, and two, Jiraiya did have more help than Itachi did. Thirdly, Itachi and Pain have different arsenals, and Pain did not go all out against Jiraiya the majority of the fight either until the six paths of Pain all congregated and disposed of Jiraiya. However, despite this, the conclusion on who had the better performance will inevitably be subjective, and from my lens, Itachi had the better performance due to how quickly and concisely he defeated Orochimaru in this specific comparison. Uh, but yeah, what do you think about the these events and how they compare uh, these feats? Yeah, so like you're saying, both Itachi and Kane respectively were able to take on Sonin-like uh, figures, um, and Jiraiya and Orochimaru respectively. With Itachi, like you're uh, illustrating, he was damn near blind, already had a huge uh, engagement with Sasuke, exerted a lot of his chakra, and nonchalantly dealt with him with the single poke of his Totsuka blade to seal the road tomorrow in his strongest form, mind you. With Pain, um, he was sick. Even in the rain village, he wasn't like, you know, a prime iteration of himself. He was still gray haired and withered, but nonetheless, he utilized his three most non-combative uh passive pains to defeat Jiraiya almost yeah um but if he did utilize you know the Ostra pass the Freda path I mean I'm sorry the um Tendo path then most most definitely he would be able to defeat Jiraiya more more likely like Itachi did to Rochimaru in that regard so um nonetheless both very impressive um yeah. it's hard to say who had the better performance because Itachi was self-inhibiting his abilities the whole time. And even doing that was still so impressive. So I would give the nod in that regard as well, just based off what was shown. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, still very impressive. And uh, the Sony and the characters to respect nonetheless. Yeah, exactly. And when you try to look at the very subtle details of the altercations, we see Itachi, around 14 years old, literally fought a rise Orochimaru. Um, very casually and quite easily. And then we see Pain sort of flexing his power. People, people don't really catch on as detail or sort of disregard it. But in the Rain Village, Pain was flexing his power. That's why, like Shinobi said, he was only using the weaker pass of Pain, if you will, to combat Jiraiya due to the confidence Pain had in his own abilities. Now, while, again, the three pass of Pain were subdued by the, the Frog Song Auditor Genjutsu, when he did begin to use substantially more effort, it was a quick and decisive victory. He had all the six pains congregate, and disposed of Jiraiya, even in Sage Mode, quite easily. So this just illustrates how much higher Itachi and Pain are in the power hierarchy in comparison to Sani. They're clear in a way, significantly above that level. Um, but like we said, Itachi just had the more impressive performance as he literally didn't even throw a strike or really throw an attack. All he did was capture Orochimaru in a Genjutsu and traumatize him. Um, he traumatized him and Orochimaru never even dared to ever threaten or challenge Itachi again. That's why he went to Sasuke instead of Itachi, because he just can't compare to the Shinobi. 
that Itachi is. Um, but yeah, that, that's the first big comparison between the two. The next big comparison is Itachi versus Sasuke and Naruto versus Pain. And again, conveniently due to the caliber of the Shinobi, both had to have handicaps essentially to make their defeats even make sense to the reader. But did you want to start out with this part um, in that yeah. comparison? Yeah, sure, brother. Um, so with Sasuke, we saw him just take on someone of Daedra's cal uh, caliber. Um, very tight-knit, um, very contentious battle between the two of them. Uh, inevitably, Sasuke won, obviously. But um, to say that beating Daedra is now enough to beat Sasuke, I mean, Itachi, even though sick, is quite a stretch, I would say. Yeah. So like Dave was saying, Itachi, how do we nerf her handicap in some regard to make him seem on par with someone of that caliber? At least in that time in the series. As we know, um, via Zetsu's statements, via the data book, um, Itachi was clearly holding back. Now, as to how much he's holding back, it's clearly unquantifiable and arbitrary. Yeah. But we do know it was quite significant because, like we said earlier, he just dealt with Orochimaru while, you know, very fatigued and, and exerted um, nonchalantly, and Orochimaru in his strongest form would be able to take on Sasuke even at that, at that time. So that's just kind of one way to uh, refer, refer upon that. But with Pain, he defeats someone in Naruto who is a tier above even Jiraiya, right? Um, he mastered Sage Mode, um, was the strongest in the village, even compared to Sonata at that time. And it took Pain to use a chaotic Shinra Tensei, you know, battle the whole uh, Leaf Village with Kakashi and everyone else. It was because of these battles that Kakashi gained intel for Choji, the Sonade, and then um, Shizune as well. And then with all this intel that was gathered, it was given to Naruto to help him in the battle. And even with all that ammo, quote unquote, it was a very like uh, contentious battle between the two of them. And he literally had to go into his Nine Tails mode because in his Sage mode iteration, it wasn't enough. And then inevitably he had to like talk Nojutsu Nagato to end the war um, in Konoha, essentially. So um, yeah, they're severely handicapped in multiple fashions. And that's why they were able to be on par, if you will, with opponents like this. So yeah, yeah. exactly. So to steal my Shinobi's uh, premise here, Pain was significantly fatigued in his altercation, and Itachi, on top of his illness, we learn after his death that he was undercover the entire time, implying that he held back against Sasuke even with an illness. Now, despite this, there are certainly some things we can extrapolate from his battles. Naruto is implied to be stronger than Sasuke by Sugetsu and Zetsu, with a significantly fatigued Pain defeating him. Now Pain single-handedly defeated an entire village, wiped it out with the correction of Chensei, and still managed to defeat the strongest shinobi in the village afterwards, which is implied and stated by Shikamaru's father, even with no knowledge on his opponent, while conversely, Itachi only faced Sasuke in his final moments. Hence, the most rational conclusion, despite Itachi holding back against Sasuke, is that Pain had the better feat and performance when comparing the two. Because, again, Pain was able to execute all these attacks and still managed to defeat the clear and cut strongest individual in the battlefield who is considered above Sasuke by Soigetsu and Zetsu, with Zetsu specifically being the retcon man, gathering intel for the Akatsuki, having very good intuition and knowledge on individuals. Um, so Pain just had the more impressive performance. Uh, that doesn't automatically allow you to conclude that Pain is superior to Itachi, because again, Itachi's holding back, he's ill, etc. But when it comes down to comparing the two feats and deciding who had the better performance, Pain did, because he had to combat an entire village and then combat Naruto after that and still managed to defeat him. So yeah, he certainly had the better performance. Now, people often overlook just how dominant Itachi and Pain truly were. Both never got a chance to truly display their true potential due to them being limited for various reasons. Itachi, as we know, was essentially always holding back due to secretly being undercover within the Ak Akatsuki the entire time. So what he does is whenever he has an encounter with a Leaf Shinobi or an ally, if you will, is he creates the illusion, ironically, that he has killer intent and the intent to use lethal force to those he combats. But in reality, he's just using enough force to make it seem realistic to that ally combatant. Right, so he, against Kakashi, for example, he made it seem very realistic to Kakashi and even to Kisame that he had killer intent, but in reality was holding back just enough to not eliminate Kakashi and eliminate others like Guy, like Sasuke when he bullied him as a child, etc. Now, Pain, due to being so powerful, 
is almost always just flexing his power rather than going all out, such as against Kakashi and Konoha, right? Against Kakashi, sure, he was having to react to what Kakashi was executing and the attacks that he was implementing, but he was simply toying with Kakashi. Even the manner in which he disposes of Kakashi, or seemingly he does, is very nonchalant. He simply flicks a nail on him, sort of disregarding him and dismissing him, if you will, due to the superiority that he has over Kakashi and all of Konoha for that matter. And again, in his most famous moment, i.e. against Naruto, he was significantly fatigued with his opponent knowing everything about him. So even in the most famous and illustrated altercation of Pain slash Nagato's career, he was significantly fatigued and had no prior knowledge while conversing Naruto had all the knowledge on him and still managed to defeat him. But yeah, did you have any uh, more to say about the illustration when they uh, engage in battle? Yeah, no, I completely agree. You know, like you're saying, like, um, combating against Kakashi to the point where it seemed believable was integral towards making the Akatsuki really feel like Itachi was one of them yeah. and wasn't going to um, go against their uh, beliefs and desires, if you will. And with Pain, you know, when he was going against Jiraiya, he goes and sends Konon first, right? And he goes and sends the animal path. Like, he clearly knows he's way above someone like even Jiraiya. Yeah. Because one, he knows him, obviously, because he was a sensei. And two, like, the fact that he's just using one path at a, at a time, or even just letting Conan deal with it, just shows he's not really um, in fear of someone of that caliber. So yeah, they're they're very high-tier shinobi, and they're in their own tier, like uh, Jay was saying earlier. So yeah, they're definitely to be respected. You know? Yeah, exactly. So the way I look at these two is Itachi is like sort of this immovable object having this mystique about him with him being so dominant and cunning that his opponents often don't know if they're even fighting the real thing. A good illustration, obviously, is when he's facing Sasuke. Sasuke thinks he kills him and then he points at the chair that's in that room and you see the real Itachi sitting there. And then we find out that's an illusion too, right? So we really, even people of Sasuke's caliber don't know if they're fighting the real thing. And that is truly illustrates Itachi's finesse and skill with the arsenal that he possesses, specifically the Sharingan and the ability to use Genjutsu at such a high level. Um, he's just sort of this immovable object because he, it, it's never really clear to his opponents for the majority of his career whether he's even present or not. Um, it just displays his insanely high caliber during that time in Shinobi history. Now with Pain, Pain or Slash or Nagato, if you will, is sort of this, this unstoppable force, right? Being this superpower of an entity that has everyone in awe which we see from the commencement of the pain arc with how people speak of him in the rain village such as the guy that Jiraiya interrogated and the guy goes on to say like oh this guy's a fucking god he killed hanzo and Jiraiya himself said oh jesus this guy defeated hanzo then how's that even possible and this is an older Jiraiya that already possesses abilities such as sage mode he's still in awe and just dumbfounded by the idea of hanzo being defeated by a single entity that that is truly shocking to him which just illustrates pain's extremely high caliber and also illustrates again how he is such in high caliber that even the sign pillow comparison so these guys are just in that rare air during this point in time in shinobi history prior to the war the few shinobi ever reach you can even argue that they're in a realm of their own that maybe only obito is in um and obviously others like hashirama madara and minuto guys like that but mm -hmm. point is these guys are in that rare air and it's quite similar it's not easy to like pinpoint exactly numerically or quantitatively who has the upper hand here what we can say is that nagato seems to have more raw power while itachi has more finesse and skill which we will discuss further uh, later on but now to drop to the next aspect that we thought was important to discuss which is narrative representation so another great way to get a gauge for the caliber of shinobi these two are with a clear character of interest for this conversation being obito himself with him knowing the shinobi from such a young age. When comparing the regards in which he holds each shinobi, respect-wise, Itachi definitely takes it here empirically. On multiple occasions, Obito implies Itachi is a threat and or can even kill him, while conversely, he refers to Pain as a subordinate and bosses him around directly, which establishes this dichotomy of boss and subordinate between him and Nagato. Now to me, this is one of the best litmus tests, if you will, on who Kishimoto himself holds in higher esteem. Uh, but yeah, what's your take on this and how do you think they're uh, represented? Yeah, so Obito is interesting, right? Because the last time they really like fought hand in hand was during the Uchiha coup. Yeah. And they were around I think Itachi's fourteen and Obito was around the same age as well. Um, obviously Itachi had the Mangeka, was pretty pretty healthy, um, didn't show any signs of sickness. And so 
if they were to grow in a similar fashion, then obviously Obute would respect him in that regard, obviously, because they've always been implied to be on that tier, just like uh, Sheesley would if he was still alive, right? Yeah. But um, it's interesting, though, because, like, Itachi is, like, the quintessential, like, double agent. You know, he is meant to withhold information from the Tkotsky, um, because his main objective is to save Konoha at the end of the day via any means possible. You know, Zatsu didn't know he had the Totsuka blade. Obviously, Tachi was sick, um, but no one really knew that, you know. Um, perhaps maybe except Kisame, because in part one, he does say, hey, don't use that Mongeko too many times, you know what I mean? Because he knows yeah. it can really get to him. So um, there is that ambiguity behind the aspect is, does Obito really know how far along Itachi's sickness really is? Yeah, exactly. And then there's Nagato, who is another interesting character because um or i guess pain right um zetsu was also in complete shock that he could be defeated um and again like we said earlier he had to get talked no jutsu for him to even like die in the first place uh essentially and then there is the whole fact of the matter when um the war arc does come around and kabuto obviously has enough summonings he does illustrate that Nagato is the second strongest summoning um even above that of itachi which is interesting because via that statement we could conclude that because of his array of abilities and his arsenal, he would be a more detrimental opponent than Itachi, but it's perhaps only because of the arsenal. Um, Itachi is an extreme finesse. Uh, like Jay said earlier, his immovable um, objects or weapons really make him such a threat. You know, beyond him, the Totsuka Blade, his um, Tsukiyomi, which is a moon given to the goddess uh, deity, right, of the moon. So. Yeah. Whether it be like narratively or via lore, um, they're both highly respected because of their abilities. Yeah, and to be fair, yeah, me and Shinomi did conclude that this video, while we do give like our personal subjective lens conclusions on certain aspects like we just did, we also want to make it informative and give several interpretations. So Shinobi just give another one. And I'll say this to kind of steel man that what you can argue is Nagato from the in initiation of the Akatsuki with Obito becoming involved, Nagato already was sort of emotionally and mentally manipulated into serving Obito. The way Obito came into Nagato's life was in a very fear-enabling way. He, he would show up to Nagato as a child, right? He would walk through him like the sort of god with his calm ways, we all know, and kind of put his foot down and say, you work for me now. Like, we're going to do things my way. And then he gives him his ideology and talks about the world is futile and, you know, trying to say the world is futile, etc. And... Project Infinite Tsukuyomi, etc. So there is the possible interpretation, which is, which is certainly valid, that the reason why he doesn't see Nagato as a threat is because he's concluded at this point in time that Nagato is under his hand and under his wing, if you will, because of the emotional and mental manipulation that he initiated since his childhood. Now, if we look at the converse of that with Itachi, we see like the respect was immediately there. When Itachi went to Obito for the Ochiha massacre plan, he's like, hey, we're going to work together. This is a partnership. If you don't agree to my terms, it will be a problem. Obito is like, okay, this guy's a threat because I don't have this hold on him. He sees me as maybe not an equal, but he sees me as someone that he can challenge. I got to be careful, tread lightly. And because of that, he sees Itachi as a threat and Pain as a subordinate. That is certainly a valid interpretation. Um, I gave my conclusion on it earlier. I said that Itachi has better narrative representation, but like, we, like me and Shinobi agreed, this video is informative and we do want to give you several interpretations. So that is certainly a possibility as to why Itachi is looked at as a threat while conversely pain is a subordinate due to the emotional and mental states that they're in in relation to Obito. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, I do think that's a fair conclusion, regardless of my own conclusion. Again, we want to make it informative. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great point, though, because like, you know, um, Obito did bestow upon Nagato's eyes in the first place. So there is an amount of like homage to be paid because of that alone, I would say. Yeah. And Obito was obviously the mastermind. Well, I guess Modder was technically, but Obito was the one actually like enacting out this plan. And, you know, Nagato was emotionally fueled by his like despair over Yahiko's death. And the Akatsuki and the Infinite Sukiyomi was a great resolution in his eyes. So exactly. it's, it's certainly valid. Yeah. Yeah. So certainly look at the empirical evidence and come to your own conclusion guys on that let us know what you think about the narrative representation we gave several interpretations and we gave our actual own conclusions uh, but yeah you, let us, you guys let us know the last part of narrative representation we want to discuss uh, is 
Zetsu uh, and how he thinks of both, right? Zetsu is the, the recon shinobi of the Akatsuki and gathers intel. He, as opposed to Obito, actually seems to hold Itachi and Pain in similar regard based on what we do see with Zetsu not being able to to even fathom the idea of Pain dying when he learns of his death. And Zetsu referring to Itachi as invincible when using Susano and Yadamir. So he sees these guys both in that rare era. So all these guys are untouchable. They're, they're unbeatable. They're, they're invincible, right? He sees them both as these unbreakable, unstoppable shinobi. Uh, pretty similarly, there is no clear difference in esteem that he holds either of these guys in. And again, he doesn't have any emotional ties to these guys. He's simply the retcon man, as we all know, was against everybody and wanted Kage to return. So he has no reason to lie about these conclusions. So yeah, he, he sees them in similar regard. And as far as a narr narrative representation, Presentation from Zetsu's perspective is quite similar for Itachi and Pain. So, do you have anything on that on uh, Zetsu? Yeah, it's it's interesting because Zetsu is like you know eons old. He is he is an, um, an incarnate of Kagi, obviously, and because of that, he has lived to see the Shinobi world and since its beginning, if you will. So, this guy is extremely intellectual. He's a great uh, uh, intel guy for the Kotsky. And he does hold these guys in very high regard because, like Jay was saying, like the fools that Itachi has makes him like a, like a god, right? He can deflect anything, he can seal anything, he can like have this ultimate genjutsu. Like he's really someone to respect, and he was baffled that like Sasuke was, you know, even going toe to toe to him, and rightfully so. And then like uh, when uh, Pain lost, he said, "I never even considered the idea that Pain could lose." So yeah, yeah, he definitely holds him in high regard, and. Um, he is someone to definitely take uh, valid information from, I would say. Yeah, exactly. So the narrative representation is another good litmus test, if you will, if you're trying to decipher uh, any possible discrepancy between Itachi and Pain and who would win. Um, that's another great aspect we had to bring up. Now, we will now be discussing Edo Itachi versus Edo Nagato, as that was the closest we've ever seen either one to their primes and the closest we've ever seen them to actually engaging in battle. So we will be going over the most relevant and illustrated aspect of each combatant that we can actually give someone of a valid take on with the empirical evidence available. So the first aspect we'll discuss of this altercation is speed. Now, this specific aspect is easily the most debated aspect when it comes to Itachi versus Pain, as well as one of the most debated topics in the Naruto fandom. So did Itachi blitz Nagato when he saved Naruto and B? Well, firstly, let's properly define Blitz, an intensive or sudden military attack. So typically, an attack classified as this in power scaling indicates that the person who was blitzed was aware of the attack but simply failed to react to it, not having efficient enough synapses to do so, indicating an insufficient reaction time. So when observing the moment when Itachi saved Naruto and B from Nagato, there are a couple of things we can extrapolate. Nagato reacted to Killer B when he attempted to save Naruto without even looking at him. While conversely, he failed to do so when Itachi attempted to save Naruto and B, indicating the probability that he was off guard, which many skeptics claim is unlikely. Furthermore, another extrapolation that most people overlook when analyzing the fight is that Nagato had more arms to spare as evident by him utilizing up to six arms when combating Kakashi in the pain arc, but only having up to four when getting intercepted by Itachi. So the argument that Nagato couldn't physically react due to no limbs being available is incorrect as well. Additionally, Kabuto himself, after Nagato's defeat, states that Nagato simply wasn't mobile enough to defeat Itachi, indicating his speed wasn't sufficient enough in besting Itachi in battle, even after no longer being crippled. Hence, there is a very good premise to be made that Nagato was blitzed by Itachi due to his insufficient reaction time, i.e. he is slower than Itachi. Hence, it is most likely that in the event Itachi and Nagato were to engage in combat, Itachi would have the speed advantage, which is huge here considering the one-shot abilities that he possesses, such as the Tosuke Blade, of course. Uh, but yeah, I know we had disagreed on this when we actually debated, which, by the way, folks, is up if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but what do you think about this, and did you have any... Uh, points of refutation with the speed um yeah so th this battle is crazy okay like yeah there are so many different interpretations and ways this can go out so but this is the empirical data that we have so we have to extrapolate info from it right but let's just let's just break it down right so obviously itachi can go par on par with uh casey and naruto with base sharingan um and then nagato can easily capture casey and naruto even with his chameleon path you know, disregarding the sensory pre uh, prowess of KCM1 with being able to sense emotions and negative emotions, that type of thing. So, um, at least in that regard, they're similar. 
Now, when Itachi does um, blitz Nagato, he does um, utilize the kunai to blind the chameleon, the snake, and then the rocket path. The of, uh, king of hell, right? So the king of hell doesn't have any mobility feats. The snake is unquantifiable, and the chameleon yeah. was allowing itself to be apparent, right? So if he had it invisible, he couldn't like see it to like blind it, and that's what gave um itachi his like moment to seize the opportunity right so with pain it's it's not just two eyes mind you it's like 12 eyes and then as we saw like directly after that engagement naruto b and itachi were all unrestrained and nagato just summons his chewbacca tensei so it does say that like they can't just blitz him before he can do a jutsu at least and if he does the right one that could be very detrimental. So it really is contingent upon the fact, like, does he have these summoning paths now? Because they also give him extra perception prowess. And two, like, is he choosing to use an inefficient jutsu against Itachi as opposed to going bloodlust to Chewbacca Tensei? It's all very situational and contextual, but, like, based off what we have, it's hard to say because they won't go in one-on-one, per se, and that's yep. what really makes the ambiguity to be so <laughs> abundant yeah, in the community. Exactly. You know? So essentially once again we're giving several interpretations to be fair. Yeah. What makes it contentious like Shinobi said is the context in which this altercation takes place. It's not just Hitachi versus Pain, it's Pain versus these three individuals as we know. And he was uh participating in like a sort of sort of tug of war of souls, if you will, with Killer B and Naruto simultaneously. Um and like Shinobi said, the, the summoning paths were disposed of or disabled as far as the ability to see thanks to Itachi's proficiency in, in kunai throwing. So that was a problem as well. Um so it simply wasn't just Nagato one on one looking at Itachi waiting for something to happen to react. And like Shinobi said, due to the minuscule and minimal amount of sort of empirical evidence that we have, it's hard to conclude definitively the, the possible speed discrepancy between the two but yeah like 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 i said earlier with the empirical evidence provided it is easier to conclude that itachi's faster with the empirical evidence actually available but again it's very minuscule and minimal so there is inevitable ambiguity and like we say look at the empirical evidence and come to a conclusion for yourself but um yeah we, we definitely have to give several interpretations so the interpretation that would suggest that nagato isn't slower than itachi would be that he's participating in a tug of war exchange um, his focus isn't primarily on Itachi, and that due to that, his reaction time isn't at its optimal. You could argue that because he's participating in this tug of war with two Jinch, perfect Jinchurikis, if you will, on top of that, he's certainly not uh, focusing his sort of ability to react, you know, with his peripherals, because again, even the summonings couldn't see anything. Um, so that's the argument that he didn't have as much time as he would if he were just engaging with Itachi one on one. Um, so that's a. That is certainly a valid interpretation that I don't deem as crazy or outlandish at all. I think it's a valid interpretation, but you let us know. What do you think? Um, no doubt. This is, yeah, this is certainly an informative video. We're giving our conclusions, but again, we're giving several interpretations as well because that's how ambiguous this overall topic is. So that's the speed. Um, now we jump to the next aspect. This specific aspect is yet another highly discussed and hence highly debated aspect as well. And who has the edge in this aspect really comes down to can Itachi destroy the nucleus of the Chewbacca Tensei? Uh, but what's your take on this if you wanted to start out with this part? Yeah, this is a tough one, man, because, you know, Itachi is obviously a genius, right? He's going to utilize what resources he has available to make the best out of the situation at hand. He discusses with Naruto, knowing that he already dealt with the situation, like, hey, can you provide some quick incel so I don't have to use what time we have to try to do this on my own, essentially. And so, talking to Naruto, I gave him some intel, but he also deduces by himself that, like, he needs the three of them uh, in conjunction with their strongest AP attacks, that being the um, Tail Beast Bombs and then the Yasaga Beads from uh, Itachi to eclipse the amount of traction that the black hole can emit from Nagato at that point. So I think based off the empirical evidence that we do have, albeit small, I would say that in conjunction, the three of them needed to utilize their abilities to deal with the threat at hand, essentially. But there is also interpretations that like, it was just a smart thing to do, right? And that could be yeah. very... Uh, rational as well to say so yeah, yeah so 
uh, this was another thing me and Shinobi disagreed on, um, specifically in our debate as well. Um, so this is what I'll say about the AP. So clearly the single and only moment we had to extrapolate from was his altercation without a Nagato as an Edo himself. Itachi constructs a plan along with Naruto and Killer B to all throw their most powerful long distance ninjutsu in an attempt to destroy the Chibaku Tensei, which succeeded. Many reiterate the premise that because Itachi asked Naruto and B for help, he can't destroy the Chibaku Tensei core on his own. Now this premise, however, I would argue is an appeal to ignorance because we never see Itachi attempt to destroy a Chibaku Tensei on his own, so there is no way to conclude on the answer to this question. So with that, along with the fact that we never see Itachi push to his limits as a shinobi, forcing him to use his highest AP ninja in a 101 one encounter, his AP classification is unquantifiable, objectively speaking. Hence, unfortunately, we can only simply educatively induce, if you will, who would have the AP advantage between Itachi and Nagato. Now, to be fair, I'll say this. Excluding the Chibaku Tensei question, truthfully, from my subjective lens, I would conclude that Nagato has higher AP as we've seen him accomplish feats from blowing off Jiraiya's arm to leveling an entire village. While conversely, we just never see Itachi accomplish any high AP feats, which also allows us to imply he doesn't depend on his AP most of the time, but rather his finesse and ability to create illusion. So as far as the Chibako Tensei argument, I just deem it as inconclusive. Um, I think there's arguments for both sides. You could say that, that him asking for help and saying he needs help would allow you to imply that he can't destroy it on his own, but while conversely, like I just said, you can argue that's an appeal to ignorance and there's an argument that he can because we never see him in that actual sort of event where you have to actually attempt to destroy it on his own. So it's unfortunately another extremely ambiguous aspect to uh, this whole topic that's that we are currently discussing. Right? Itachi, does he have the AP to deal with something of that magnitude? Because if he doesn't, he will die. Right? He'll be pulled into it and he will be eliminated by the force of all the rubble and all the rocks coming to the nucleus of the Chewbacca Tensei. So that is an important question you have to ask yourself because that would certainly be a win con and a very high likelihood win con if Itachi can't destroy it. But yeah, did you want to any, add anything to that, to the AP discussion? Itachi is very tactical. You know, like doing yeah. like these socket beats might be detrimental because Uchiha's aren't really known for having like an abundance of like chakra like the um, Uzumaki clan per se. But yeah. It's the finesse. It's like the ultimate genjutsu. It's all these abilities he can utilize that would be more quick and efficient that would enable him to win the battle safely because his illness is really, it's very much so a thing. So at least in his alive iteration, it probably wouldn't be wise to do that off rip, right? Especially when he has Sukiyomi and things like that. So it's just, um, it's very inconclusive because of the uh, limited extra, uh, extrapolation that we can have from this. Yeah tiny window of a battle that we saw so yeah exactly it's very similar to the speed aspect we just discussed it's just a very minuscule and minimal amount of empirical evidence or mm -hmm. datums if you will to make any extrapolations from it's just a single altercation a single Chibaku Tensei was released and executed and a single destruction event took place where he had help I mean it's it, besides that we have nothing Besides mm -hmm. your pure speculation, our own subjective lenses, which can come to different deductions and conclusions, and it's as simple as that. So there are certainly several interpretations which can be at odds with each other that are valid. As simple as that. And again, you guys let us know what you think about that. I mean, we gave our conclusions on it, like our actual conclusions at the beginning. Then we gave several other interpretations. You know, we simply just inform what's likely, or not what's likely, but what's possible. So that's that. Uh, now we want to just quickly discuss the narrative representation of this battle, the way it's illustrated by Kishimoto, if you will. Now, clearly this altercation was illustrated in a way to make Itachi be the hero of the story, if you will. He saves Naruto and B from Nagato and then swiftly seals him, which implies his likely superiority amongst the group of Shinobi. And again, just by the way it's illustrated with Naruto and Killer B about moments away from death and Itachi coming in, literally swooping in, saving them, and then, you know, devising the plan to destroy Chibaku Tensei and then sealing Nagato, Kishimoto more than likely intended him to be the hero, I and mean, he literally goes on to stop the reanimation jutsu after that, being the only guy that can with the Izanami. The way that this is illustrated just indicates his superiority amongst the shinobi. But yeah, that'll be my interpretation of it. What do you think about how this was narratively re represented? I agree, bro. You know, yeah. like Itachi was such a huge plot twist in the whole series. Like the whole time, he's meant to be portrayed as like this, like evil brother and like did all the things out of spite but in reality he was doing this to like really help Kona at the end of the day and he really did that by unlocking the secret towards reversing that Tensei with the uh, Shisui's ability in Kodo, stopping Kabuto's Edo uh, Tensei army with the Izanami like 
he was the hero at the end of the day. And if he died to Nagato, none of that would have happened. And the story yeah. would have been completely different. So he had to find a way to win. And I have no disagreements with it whatsoever, but it was just necessary for the narrative to flow as smooth and fluid as it did. So yeah, um, I think that definitely at least has some validity in terms of like representation in that regard because he taught you how to do what he did to make the story progress so yeah yeah very important so the two possible conclusions that are at odds with each other they contradict each other is the one for the pro Itachi side would say he was illustrated in a way to be the hero that implies his superiority. That's one interpretation that's valid. The other one is the only reason he beat Nagato was because of convenient plot storytelling and it's a plot device, if you will, that could even be classified as like a duus ex machina, which is just like an unlikely event that takes place for the sake of the plot. I think that's possibly valid. Um, it's possibly valid, um, but I could argue against that and just say, well, he had several encounters with Nagato, the first blitz the Chewbacca Tensei and the ceiling. Um, but I would, regardless, I would say that that interpretation is somewhat valid as well. Both, again, it, these interpretations are contradict each other, but they're both valid, which just further illuminates ambiguity and contentiousness. So there is one more aspect worth discussion before we get to conclusions that we felt had to be addressed. Uh -oh. And that, of course, is the Genjutsu aspect. So is the Renegon immune to Genjutsu? Well, when looking at the canonical literature, empirically, there is actually more to conclude that the Renegon is not immune to visual Genjutsu. We see Obito and Kakashi put each other in Genjutsu, and we see Jiraiya, along with Ma and Pa, catching three of the six passive pain in an auditory Genjutsu, further reinforcing the premise that the passive pain are susceptible to being caught in Genjutsu in general. So if the Renegon is not immune to Genjutsu, then how would something like Tsukuyomi affect the passive pain in Nagato specifically? Um, what do you think about this, Shinobi? How would that affect them? Something like the Tsukuyomi. Yeah, so first off, I just want to say like Sasuke's Renegon is not equivalent to Nagato's at all. I mean, yeah. that's like a Rinne Sharingan that could, yeah, it could deflect the infinite Tsukuyomi, but it's not analogous whatsoever. Yeah. Um, it's interesting though because like we see on multiple occasions with like this like Genjutsu battle or like trickery. If it was like a game of chess, you know, there's Kakashi saying, "Oh, enough of these like Genjutsu games." It's like a, uh, they're just trying to like invoke emotion from one another, you know, making Kakashi see Rin and or Rin and making him like stab her and like just to invoke that like anguish that he's felt for so long, right? And uh, with Itachi yeah. and Sasuke, like, they're just playing, like, a Genjutsu game, like, the whole chair. It's a constant, like, battle of, like, who's superior in Genjutsu, even though we know Itachi is, right? Especially yeah, Tsukuyomi. Exactly. So, it's very interesting because that's all we really have to extrapolate from. And it seems like, I agree, that the Renegon is not immune to all Genjutsu. Like, the Frog Song, it's auditory. So, at the very least, you can say it is susceptible towards that. And... In the data book, it's actually said to be the strongest Genjutsu, although I think it's kind of uh, interpretive, but nonetheless, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a very strong Genjutsu, and I can see it definitely playing a part, but um, Itachi doesn't have that, right? And yeah. Itachi does say himself in part one, like, you know, you need to have, like, the same bloodline, meaning the Sharingan, and Kekai Genkai, to even resist the Tsukiyomi, and obviously Nagato has moderate eyes, so it's very ambiguous because, like, you only have Kav you only have Obito and Kakashi really going at it with Genjutsu per se, and they're just kind of like playing games. So yeah. it's weird. Like, can they turn it off or on? It's like you can't really say for sure. You know? Yeah. I mean? the, so. the the question of can they voluntarily be unimmune to a Genjutsu because they choose to or not? That that's certainly ambiguous. Like, could you argue that they could literally shut off their their immunity or turn it back on like itachi against sasuke or like etc it, it's certainly ambiguous um and yeah like shinobi said itachi says you need a sharingan to defeat me and kakashi when he's trying to withstand a sukiyomi says it oh, only a sharingan user could even handle this like it's extremely ambiguous for sure and the, the empirical pieces of evidence i presented to kind of reinforce the premise that renegons aren't immune to genjutsu we know for sure they're not immune to all genjutsu that's for sure again because the auditory one caught this three out of the six past the pain and again the cob the the kakashi versus obito fight is a possible piece of uh, evidence if you presuppose that obito wasn't voluntarily just being susceptible to genjutsu um and i think you can argue either way to be honest i just think again 
from my subjective lens, I'd deduce that it's not immune to Genjutsu, whether auditory or visual, with the empirical pieces of evidence we do have. But again, if you believe that there is some sort of immunity, it's not an absurd take, but I do think the empirical evidence goes against you um, with what we do have and what you can extrapolate and deduce. But moving on from that, answering the question of how would the Tsukuyomi most likely affect the passive pain if we presuppose that Renegons are not immune. This is what I would say. What we do know, again, is that an auditory Genjutsu, despite affecting the three passive pain, didn't affect Nagato directly, but instead it seemed that Nag Nagato simply lost control of the pass with their auditory senses being disrupted. This indicates the high probability that the passive pain having any of their five senses disrupted wouldn't result in Nagato being affected directly, but rather him losing access to their bodies, almost as if the chakra signal between him and the passive pain in question is fractured and severed by such an event. Hence, the most rational conclusion is that Itachi Shokuyami would affect the path of pain, but not Nagato directly, with again, the empirical evidence we do have and what it does allow us to imply. So what would be the best course of action to optimally exploit this vulnerability for Itachi? Well, as we know, the paths of pain vary in power quite significantly based off the feats we see each accomplish respectfully, with the diva path seemingly being the most capable. Itachi, having the high intellect he does, would most likely deduce that himself and would hit him first with Genjutsu, and with that path of pain out of the equation, his chances of successfully defeating pain would increase significantly. Hence, Genjutsu is certainly a very possible win condition for Itachi against the six paths of pain. Um, but what do you think? How do you think Tsukuyomi specifically would affect uh, the six paths of pain? Um, yeah, like you're saying, bro, when Jiraiya put the three paths of pains in the auditory Genjutsu, he says, like, it's a Genjutsu that paralyzes your nerves in your mind. So yeah. if that was true, that it would paralyze all of their minds, and obviously the Oscar path wouldn't come in and, you know, delam him yeah. and then all that stuff that inevitably led to his uh, unaliving, you know. So, and also there's like, you know, when a beaky like um, mentally like interrogates the animal path during the pain invasion, there's no indication that like he's uh, gathering intel from any other path of pain as well. So you could say that like they do work independently, but to be on Itachi's side with this, folks, the Tsukiyomi, again, it's like a name of like a deity. So even if like pain is like a god, well, Itachi kind of has like a godly power in the Tsukiyomi. It's like yeah. constantly like referred to as like one of the most ultimate Genjutsus. And so if we do presuppose like he does not have immunity towards it, if Itachi does have the intellect to just go after the Tendo path first and foremost, then that would be quite problematic. But again, it's situational because Nagato always does the animal pass in all of his engagements throughout the battle, at least first and foremost. So really a question is like, does it work? Does it not? I mean, it could go either way, to be honest, folks. And if he chooses the right one, I mean, that really helped Itachi at the end of the day. So it could go yeah, either exactly. way, to be honest. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. What most likely would happen is like Itachi would capture the diva path in Tsukuyomi and then he would realize it's just a dead corpse that is no longer active and he'd probably just like unrelease the jutsu. They all right, well, at least Nagato can't use him anymore. He's he's um, out of commission. But yeah, it, the, the chances of it affecting Nagato directly are very unlikely as again, we've seen him We've seen passive pain caught in Genjutsu in general, and we see Nagato still able to control others, right? So again, that just reinforces the premise that he is not affected directly. And it might be, it might seem weird because his chakra network is being dispersed throughout these passive pain, but for whatever reason, it's not dispersed in a way that leaves him susceptible to being hit by Genjutsu, at least from what we've seen. I mean, we see how that interaction uh, takes place and how it transpires so the genjutsu uh, aspect certainly had to be discussed by us and again another contentious aspect that's just a common theme with this discussion and itachi versus pain which just further illustrates the inevitable ambiguity when it comes to this topic um you, but you guys let us know again when it comes to genjutsu how do you think that would play a factor in this battle do you think it'd even play a factor in the equation um you guys let us know as well again i just thought like what if like like he senses uh itachi's about to use it and like he tries to absorb it with their fate of or something weird like that like oh shit who knows like what could actually happen and it's weird because yeah. like itachi doesn't use sukiyomi during their engagement i really wish he did you know what i mean yeah no, that would have been a really good cool thing to see to see him caught in that like yeah it, it's, it's just never transpired so it's it's very difficult to sort of conclude and deduce how that would be illustrated but um yeah that would that would be a weird uh Super that weird. would be yeah that, that would be a weird sort of 
altercation if you try to absorb it. I wonder if it's even absorbable. Um, that's going to be very strange, actually. But yeah, so now we get to conclusions. So again, this video is informative, but we're going to give our take on who we think wins. So we're going to do two. We're going to do first going to do Itachi versus a six pass of pain. And then we're going to do a hypothetical prime Itachi versus prime Nagato. So we'll start out with a live Itachi versus a six pass of pain. Um, did you want to start uh, first? I'll give your take here first. Sure. So yeah. I think Pain kind of has more of an edge here, folks, just because like he has an extra set of eyes, uh, multiple set of eyes, if you will, um, not including the animal pass as well. So it would take Itachi, based on what we saw, he would most likely be able to deduce like, hey, like blinding all these guys first with the kunai might really help me out at the end of the day in a situation like is the animal is the chameleon path invisible or not like if not i mean that could really help him with that at least in that regard is the kunai even fast enough to blind all of them when he's like unhibited by soul tugging or the killer b who are both perfect in turkeys like jay mentioned so it's interesting but i think based off like just seeing like nagato be able to like do a jutsu right in front of itachi makes me say that he can't blitz him out right and if he chooses the right jutsu to utilize or implement like the shibako or um shinra tente or something like that or even levitation you know for that regard like there's not many shinobi in naruto that can even fly like that so i just think he has the more like um advantageous arsenal to implement I think he has adequate speed to at least utilize jutsus and not to mention uh battle of attrition as well so it really comes down to like the sikiyomi being able to hit or not it's it's very inconclusive in my opinion but based off what we do have if they were to fight one-on-one -on -one, i think pain would have the slight edge um it's all situational it all depends on what he does and what he doesn't but yeah i think that's what i would have to say for those two specifically for right now yeah yeah so, as far as my conclusion, this is what I'll say about a live Itachi versus a six pass of pain. Now, what makes a safe deduction difficult to construct for this matchup is that, as we all know, Itachi's health is gradually deteriorating while he is alive due to his bizarre illness. And additionally, the ambiguous difference in power of the pass of pain dependent upon how far Nagato is from the pass of pain. So, what we can conclude rationally is that pain has a more powerful and destructive arsenal based on the empirical evidence, while Itachi, if healthy enough, most likely has a speed advantage if we presuppose my speed scaling for the Edo altercation holds. Hence, the battle really comes down to the speed discrepancy between the two. So with Itachi at his least ill and at the peak of his skill, I would conclude he defeats the six pass of pain more times than not because again, that speed discrepancy would still most likely be there. And with tools such as Genjutsu, the Tosuka Blade, and Amaterasu, he would most likely systematically take out all the pass of pain over time and still most likely have the speed stamina to endure that battle with his illness not restricting him too much at this point in time however at a certain point once he reaches a high enough arbitrary level of illness he will be inferior as a combatant in terms of speed and i would go as far as to say and conclude that any version of itachi part one and beyond would most likely lose to the six pass of pain more times than not as even in part one it's implied that even one Tsukuyomi is costly to Itachi's chakra reserves by people such as Kisame and Kakashi which further indicates his lack of stamina here as well so like Shinobi said it's certainly situational how this would take place we obviously disagree on Itachi's best chances and how that would go but the situation and the specific scenario and context of the altercation in question will certainly greatly dictate and sway uh, the likelihood of either one winning if Pain's in the rain village and Itachi's as sick as he was against Sasuke then he's most likely going to lose Itachi that Itachi is near death, his stamina is depleting his health, his abilities, while conversely pain is at the prime and peak of his powers in the rain village and he would most likely dispose of Itachi. He probably wouldn't even be fast enough to even hit Nintendo Pain, let alone defeat him. So that would be for Itachi's favor. Now if it's the pass of pain significantly far away from Nagato and Itachi's younger and healthier and more at his peak, there's a much better argument that Itachi would win that one. Right, so it's situational for sure. That's our conclusions on that. Um, you guys let us know as well. Like we said in every other aspect, how do you think this would go? Um, so now we get to Prime Itachi versus Prime Nagato. Now the conclusion to this one differs from the previous one. In this scenario, Itachi doesn't have his illness, restricting him from his peak powers, meaning everything besides stamina is slightly above what we saw from Edo Itachi, with Edo's being slightly weaker. Um, and same goes for Nagato. Hence, the discrepancy at speed between Itachi and Nagato would once again be illustrated the way it was when we saw the altercation between Edo Itachi and Edo Nagato. Due to this, several 
several tools in Itachi's arsenal would be viable options, such as the Genjutsu, again, the Totsuka Blade, and Amaterasu. Nagato's margin for error would actually be smaller than it would be for the six Pass of Pain, as he would be facing Itachi directly, indicating that if he were hit by Tsukuyomi, it would hit him directly and dispose of him, as we all know. On top of the speed advantage Itachi would have here, so there's actually an argument that the six Pass of Pain at the peak of their powers would have a better chance due to the Genjutsu sort of margin for error that he would have because we established the high likelihood that Nagato isn't hit directly by Genjutsu when one of his passive pain are but it's certainly most likely that he would be hit directly by Tsukuyomi if he's facing Itachi one-on-one -on -one. so I think Itachi takes it either way um, whether it's the six passive pain in their prime or Nagato in their prime but yeah, what's your what's your take on this part? I think uh, I think Nagato definitely differs, right? Um, yeah. You know, it's hard to say if Itachi would or wouldn't use Tsukiyomi just based off their engagement in the war arc, but if he did use it and it did work, it would be extremely detrimental to Nagato, obviously, because it's one vessel, and there is no escaping that behind a myriad of other bodies to, like, help with the disadvantaged state that you're in. Yeah. Um, so if, if it does work, that's GG's, essentially. Now, it really does come down to speed, again, folks. And also Jutsu's. Like, if Itachi tries to use Amaterasu or, like, a Fireball Jutsu, that can just get absorbed and just cost him Chakra for no reason at all, right? So it would have to, like, resort to something like Tsukiyomi or, like, blitzing him with the Tosca Blade that would really be advantageous. Um, the Yadamir could also be utilized greatly for, like, the Shinra Tensei and other abilities Nagato has. Um, Amaterasu can deal with like the animal pass, etc. Except for the chameleon if it's invisible, I will admit. But despite that, I think Nagato is at a disadvantage just by himself. So if we do presuppose Genjutsu does work, I see Itachi taking this kind of easily, to be honest. Yeah. But if it doesn't, then, it, like again, it comes down to the speed. You know, Nagato did use a Jutsu right in front of him. So it's really hard for me to say, but I would say Itachi has a better time in this matchup for sure, and it can. I, I, just to be fair, I think it could go either way, like easily, like for sure. Yeah, but it's extremely contentious. And yeah, yeah, it's very contentious. It, it depends on your presuppositions of many factors, like such as the ones you discussed in this video. But there you guys have it. That is the Itachi versus Pain discussion and video. And, and as it has become blatantly clear to you guys, I'm sure, the topic is very contentious and ambiguous. To come to a conclusion requires analyzing this multivariate equation that leads you to these logical dead ends where you inevitably have to use a subjective lens to come to a rational conclusion. Meaning we are very aware that there are probably disagreements some of you may have with us. So please leave your thoughts in the comment section below as we would be interested in hearing your guys' thoughts whether you disagree or not. Um, but that's going to wrap it up folks and we'll see you in the next video. Stay classy y'all. Thanks guys.